Well, today we're going to look at the postmodern world and see how it fits into the uh, development of the woke culture. It's interesting to go back to Winston Churchill to look at this quote where he said, the most valuable thing in the world is truth. And there were a lot of things thrown at him, and yet he stood firm and took uh, Britain through one of its darkest hours. And uh, he clung to truth. And we need to do that today because we're going through a very dark time, I believe. So remember these words by Winston Churchill. Well, the concept of truth is central to Christianity. We know this. And yet it is one of the most strongly attacked concepts in our faith, especially today. Uh, in fact, it's been turned on its head. There are so many things that uh, are coming at us that are so hypocritical. It's just so frustrating for people to say, well, this is what we believe. This is truth. This is how it is. And it's the opposite of what happened. It's the opposite of what the truth is. And that's very frustrating. Remember that Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We need to cling to that. We need to uh, remember uh, how the Bible fits in. We need to follow and live by the tenets of the Bible today more than ever. Unfortunately, even many conservative Christians have cast off the belief in the absolute truth. This is a very interesting uh, survey that was done back um, in the 90s, which is very revealing because it's much more so today. But back then, and they did a comparison between 1991 and 1994, between non-Christians and Christians in the whole idea of whether truth is absolute. Well, for non-Christians, uh, they said that truth is not absolute. How many? 67% said that truth is not absolute. It's relative. What about Christians in 1991? How many of them said that truth is not absolute? Well, interestingly enough, sadly enough, 52%, half of the Christians polled, so the truth is not absolute, it's relative. Well, how did that change in three years? This is very revealing, too. In 1994, non-Christians raised that to 75%. So 75% of non-Christians in 1994 who were polled said that uh, truth is not absolute, it's relative. But what about Christians? That's, a, um, by the way, 67% to 75% is what, 8%. 8% uh, rise in the percentage. Christians in 1994, 62% said truth is not absolute. That's a 10% rise in uh, the trek toward relativism. What would it be today in 2021, 20 some years ago, 27 years ago? Wow, that's uh, pretty unnerving. So let's see how that played out. What we want to ask is who is moved? Is it God or us? Well, we know it's us. God is steady. His word is steady. His law is steady. But how far have we moved away? And that's the sad part about Christianity in the United States and throughout the world in many ways, many places. Let's see what uh, Ravi Zechariah says about this in his uh, article, The Inextinguishable Light. Quote, in the modern world, reason reigns supreme, and it was envisioned that rational man would hold all things together. Now, postmodernism has become the buzzword in academia, the word by which all things have fallen apart. For reason itself is banished as a dinosaur in humanity's evolutionary climb, and truth is considered extinct. Well, by that poll that we just looked like, looked at, by that poll that we just looked at, it seems that uh, his words are very true. Even Christians are abandoning the truth for relativism. For the world today, truth is only for one who believes, they say, that there is a correspondence to reality, only the ones who believe. Since truth does not exist for many, then what is held as true is only a belief. And a belief cannot be rationally held in the eyes of many today. This is what uh, we would call the postmodern syllogism, argument, logical argument. 
their premise would be absolute truth does not exist in a rational, factual world. Their first argument would be only a belief system states that absolute truth exists. Argument two, belief and reality are incompatible. So what would be their conclusion? Since only a belief system upholds the concept of absolute truth, then absolute truth cannot exist because a belief system is not viable. Interesting. So where do we go from here? Well, these are three steps that Ravi talks about. Unless we establish the possibility and the necessity of truth and of how one arrives at the truth, any belief system can be mocked at will or offhandedly dismissed as cultural. Now, remember, that's what's happening today. The woke culture is trying to uh, dismantle Christianity, persecute Christianity, uh, take it out of the picture because their agenda won't work in a Christian milieu. And so we need to see how this works out together. Now, we're going to compare modernism uh, and postmodernism. Modernism was what we've gone through in the rational world for the last couple hundred years through the world of science. Uh, in some ways, it could go hand in hand with Christianity, but uh, in many ways through naturalism, it turned away and led to this pathway of naturalism down to uh, nihilism and existentialism and now postmodernism. By the way, existentialism and postmodernism are um, aspects of trying to refute nihilism. Nihilism doesn't lead to a very good ending. Everything is meaningless and we want meaning. So we try to put meaning into the world through existentialism. I believe, therefore I am, therefore I have something in this world, but it all focuses on me. Um, Postmodernism goes beyond that and it tries to uh, make sense of the world in another way, but it uh, really relativizes truth. And that's one of the big problems. So modern versus postmodern. In, mo in the modern world, there's purpose and design. But in the postmodern world, it's randomness and chance. Uh, modern world stability and values versus values are transient and relative. And we saw that by that survey. The modern world reason as the means and meaning as the end is an aphorism we can claim. But postmodernism says glor it glories in unreason and celebrates meaninglessness. It revels in the meaninglessness to an extent until that meaninglessness uh, hits it at the, at the rock bottom. Modern world says that there's a search to find the unity of truth but that's been abandoned in postmodernism, which focuses on deconstruction and it extols contradictions. Just think of all the political contradictions that we've heard in the last year or so. It's amazing how hypocritical um, our world has become because they've abandoned truth. They've abandoned that search to find unity of truth. Here's a uh, representative picture of the modern world uh, through architecture, because architecture is a symbol of what has happened. Now you see um, something that has form, but not structure. And that's the key idea. Form becomes everything, but content is lost. Even in our, uh, our thinking, in our intellectual world, in our pursuit of truth. Form becomes everything, content is lost, and therefore uh, content does not matter. We'll see how this works out. Deconstruction is a, a, a key idea of this uh, postmodernism. Remember W.B. Yeats said that things fall apart, the center will not hold. And we see that uh, very much in this world. The center will not hold, and we need to to work back to the center. And remember that, uh, that God is the still point of the turning world. Remember the scripture says uh, of God, he says, be still and know that I am God. Be still, he is the center. He will hold things together. And that's why we need to hold that strongly, hold strongly to that truth. Well, let's put biblical theism into our charts here. Uh, in regard to truth, uh, 
for the for the biblical theism, truth has been revealed to men and women by God. It's a revelatory religion. Modernism said truth can be discovered by reason and logical augmentation. So it was hand in hand for a while, but then it departed from this biblical theism. And then postmodernism came along and ripped it apart and said truth does not exist objectively. It is a product of a person's culture. Notice how much today's culture believes in this relative idea. What about human identity? From the Bible, humans are both spiritual and material beings created in God's image, but fallen because of sin. Uh, modernism said that uh, humans are rational, not spiritual. They split that, and that was one of the failure points of uh, the modern world view. Uh, beings who can define their existence according to what their senses perceive. So the five senses became the end all of who we are. And we know that that's the only part of it, a very small part, really, very limited part. And postmodern, uh, the postmodern world says humans are primarily social beings, products of their culture and environment. So we can change according to our culture, and our culture is changing rapidly uh, through this postmodern expansion. What about the world? The Bible sees the that God is the creator, preserver, and governor of his earth and has instructed humans to subdue it and care for it. We have a duty. We have a responsibility to care for this world. Modernism said, said uh, humans can and, can and should conquer the earth and all its mysteries. So it's been an adventuresome, exploratory type of view for hundreds of years. What about postmodernism? It says that life on earth is fragile, and the enlightenment model of the human conquest of nature must give, quickly give way to a new attitude of cooperation with the earth. Mother Earth, Gaia, uh, preserving the environment. Was, a lot of that's good. That's the responsibility of us as Christians, but not to worship it. It's, uh, it's fleeting. It's changing. It's going to be radically uh, destroyed and re renewed in the new heaven and new earth. So... Um, we need to keep all of this in perspective. What about thought and language? For the biblical theism, reason can disclose truth about reality, but faith and revelation are needed in addition. We need both spheres, general revelation and special revelation. Modernism said, uh, for answers and understanding about life and the world around us, people should rely only on rational discovery through the scientific method and reject belief in the supernatural. So there's been that development of the rejection of the supernatural as modernism has uh, take, uh, took hold for hundreds of years. But what about now in postmodernism? It says that thinking is a social construct, language is arbitrary, and there is no universal truth transcending culture. That's the problem. Um, and then human progress. Uh, biblical theism says that uh, human history is not progressing, but awaiting deliverance. Uh, the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, the end of this poor world that we're in, and a new world coming. Modernism said human progress through the use of science and reason is inevitable, but it wasn't inevitable. It's turning on its head now through postmodernism, which says things are not getting better. Besides, progress is an oppressive Western concept. Everything has got to come to that, right? Well, all of these charts that, uh, that I just showed you come from uh, Josh McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Very good book to read on this uh, um, material. Okay, well, let's look at it another way. And this is another chart uh, I put together, Biblical Truth versus Postmodern Relativism. Biblical truth versus postmodern relativism. Well, on the left side will be biblical truth. On the right side, the, the postmodern view. Bible says that truth is revealed by God. Truth is discovered, not invented, because it's revealed. However, postmodernism says truth is created, not discovered. We create it. And whatever we create is truth, but it's not truth at all. 
Uh, the Bible says truth is transcultural. It transcends. Uh, well, it's transcultural because it goes above and beyond all cultures. All cultures can fit into it. All laws apply to it. The Ten Commandments apply to all cultures. But uh, postmodernism said there is no universal transcultural truth. You make it in your own culture. Your own culture has its own truth. So different cultures have different truths. And that can get very sticky. Uh, the Bible says truth is unchanging. Postmodernism says that truth changes, can change as you wish. The Bible says beliefs cannot change a truth statement no matter how sincere, but postmodernism says one's beliefs can change a truth statement. And we see that happening all the time today. Your truth becomes the truth, and the uh, biblical truth becomes air. Um, or passe. Okay, the Bible says the truth is unaffected by one's attitude, and uh, postmodernism says the truth is affected by the attitude of the one professing it. So your attitude has everything to say about truth in the postmodern world, and see how that has uh, played itself out in uh, politics and the culture uh, that has been devastating our country. The Bible says that all truths are absolute, but of course, postmodernism says that there can no, be no such thing as absolute truth, which is uh, uh, rendering truth obsolete, really. The Bible says truth is knowable. Postmodern world says that absolute truth is not knowable. And um, that really, that viewpoint really renders truth obsolete. And that's the problem with the world today. Remember that uh, in the time of Christ, in the trial of Christ, Pilate said, what is truth? What is truth? And remember in another place in scripture, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the way, the truth and the life. So Jesus said, I am the truth. And that's why we need to follow what he says because what he gives us is truth, absolute truth. So how do we arrive at the truth? Well, truth conforms to reality. This again from Ravi. An absolute is basically an unchanging point of reference by which all other changes are measured. Each discipline brings with it a handful of certainties by which others are developed. These certainties, if assumed, must be previously demonstrated when used as absolutes. So for Christians, the starting point is God. And this gives us the structure of reason. We still need to use reason in order to show that truth, one, must correspond to reality, and that two, it must be coherent. So this statement relies on two fundamental laws, the law of non-contradiction and the laws of rational inference. So the law of non-contradiction we talked about before says that A is true and if A is true, then B is false, or if A is false, then B is true, if you're comparing two things, or both A and B are false. They both cannot be true. So if we put uh, something to this, if Christianity is true, Islam is false because they're diametrically opposed. But if Christianity is false, Islam is true, unless <laughs> both are false, and because uh, both cannot be true. So that's the law of non-contradiction. Ra rational people use this. Non-rational people do not. And we're in a non-rational world in many ways. Also, statements must correspond to reality. So you have the law of rational inference. The outcome of any system of thought must be coherent. Legitimate conclusions result from valid arguments. So we need to use valid arguments, even if we're in a world that rejects those arguments. We need to press them forward so that they can be heard and developed. Ravi said this, if truth were all inclusive, nothing would be false. In other words, if uh, everything is true and you have contradictions, this is true, I say it's true, this is true and it's contradictory, but if they're all inclusive, nothing would be false. And then he goes on, if nothing were false, what would be the meaning of true? For the, furthermore, if nothing were false, would it be true to say that everything is false? it quickly becomes evident that nonsense would follow. And that's the road that we're going down, the road of nonsense. 
Now, truth is exclusive because it is the only coherent conclusion that we can derive. Truth is rational. Truth is rational and corresponds to reality. We can hold on to that. Belief in truth is rational and belief corresponds to reality. Remember that. There is an empirical factor. Reason must be balanced with experience. Our experiences show that the truths that we believe are based in reality. We can go back to that experience to validate or to emphasize. Christianity is the ultimate pragmatism in this sense. It is the only religion that holds the center. It is the only one that fully corresponds to reality. So again, we need to push these uh, other views to their logical conclusion to show that they do not correspond to reality. And remember that God is still is the still point in the turning world. So don't give up. Push your arguments to their logical conclusion. Um, false reasoning cannot hold consistently to the end. Remember what C.S. Lewis said, good philosophy must exist if for no other reason because bad philosophy needs to be answered. We need to answer that bad philosophy. And so Ravi says this, truth can exist only if there is an objective standard by which to measure it. That objective unchanging absolute is God. So we need to push it to these conclusions. So whether it's biblical theism, modernism, or postmodernism, when we look at reason, we need to say that truth corresponds to reality no matter what the person believes. In regard to experience, we need to say that experience validates the reality of truth and therefore modernism and postmodernism needs to understand what is truth. Remember what Jesus said, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So we need to um, really work hard at understanding biblical truth and then sharing that because we have a fallen world that does not understand what truth is, but they will listen if the Spirit is leading, and we need to be available.